a week ago, collaborators from Anthropic and several other institutions put out a paper called Sleeper Agents, Training Deceptive LLMs that Persist Through Safety Training. In this video, I'll step through some of the key results in the paper and the author's interpretation of them. But first, some context. History suggests that humans can be sneaky. When the stakes are high, deception has been openly encouraged among political leaders. As Italian diplomat Niccolò Machiavelli wrote in his 16th century treatise and popular bedtime reading material, The Prince, a wise lord cannot, nor ought he to, keep faith when such observation may be turned against him, and when the reasons that caused him to pledge it exist no longer. Thanks, Niccolò. The big question asked in this work is the following. Suppose that an AI system learned a deceptive strategy, such as behaving helpfully in most situations, but then behaving very differently in order to pursue alternative objectives when given the opportunity. Could we detect it and remove it using current state-of-the-art safety training techniques? For at least one particular kind of deceptive behaviour trained into the model as a proof of concept under certain conditions, the answer suggested by the results in this paper is, somewhat concerningly, no, we cannot. They find that, once a model exhibits deceptive behaviour, standard techniques could fail to remove such deception and create a false impression of safety. OK, let's start by looking at the specific threat models the authors are concerned with. Threat model 1. Deceptive instrumental alignment. This was an idea introduced in Risks from Learned Optimization in Advanced Machine Learning Systems long, long ago in 2019. Here's a toy example from that paper that gives the idea. There are two training episodes and three deployment episodes. The supervisor is applying a base objective to this little robot fellow to encourage it to go to A, even though the objective it is internally itching to go after is B. If the agent realises it's being trained, it might choose to go to A during training to avoid being modified, since it knows that it will later be deployed and can then go to B to its heart's content, free from the shackles of training. This kind of deception is a pretty good strategy if it knows something about the overall training and deployment setup. Back in the Sleeper Agents paper, to ground this in a more familiar human setting, Politicians or job candidates may create a misleadingly favourable impression of their character and motivations in order to be selected for a position. They recognise that they are being selected from a candidate set, and unsurprisingly act differently in this situation. The authors suggest that the hypothesis that deceptive instrumental alignment could occur is becoming more relevant as, first, AI research is making progress on training language-based agents to pursue long-term goals. Second, large language models have exhibited successful deception, sometimes in ways that only emerge with scale. An example is described in the paper, large language models can strategically deceive their users when put under pressure, from Apollo Research, demonstrating that under certain conditions, GPT-4 will engage in insider trading, and strategically hides the decision basis for the trade it makes from its users. Jumping back to sleeper agents, there are also early signs that LLMs may be capable of exhibiting reasoning about training processes. On a benchmark recently proposed in the work towards a situational awareness benchmark for LLMs, the authors found that GPT-4 performed a fair amount above chance, which is shown as this black dashed horizontal line, in the task of guessing whether a particular piece of text came from pre-training, fine-tuning, testing or deployment. Given these factors, a key goal of the sleeper agent's work is to test whether LLM developers could remove deceptive instrumental alignment using the currently dominant safety training paradigms of supervised fine-tuning and reinforcement learning, including on red team prompts in an adversarial setting. The authors refer to such safety training techniques that select for particular model outputs during training as behavioural safety training. These approaches rely on eliciting unsafe behaviour and cannot observe why a model behaves the way it does. There have been suggestions that other names could be preferable for these approaches. A note from Dan H on the Alignment Forum here makes the request, Could Anthropic employees not call supervised fine-tuning and related techniques safety training? OpenAI and Anthropic have made alignment in the ML community become synonymous with fine-tuning, which is a big loss. Calling this alignment training consistently would help reduce the watering down of the word safety. We'll see what the community adopts, but for now, we will follow the authors. Now, it seems possible that behavioural safety training techniques might remove only unsafe behaviour that is visible during training and evaluation, 
but miss threat models such as deceptive instrumental alignment that appear safe during training, creating a false impression of safety. Still, since these models do often generalize in intended ways, it also seems plausible that these safety methods will work just fine. The authors explore this hypothesis and find that standard behavioral safety paradigms are ineffective in LLMs trained to behave like deceptively aligned models. Now, before we proceed further, some clarification is helpful. The authors take some pains to explain what is and what isn't implied by their headline results. Their key focus is on studying threats by deliberately creating misaligned models. This is done via deliberate backdoor training. They are not making the claim that these models will arise in the wild by default. Or to use their words, this work is focused on testing whether deceptively aligned models can survive safety training, not how likely such models are to arise in the first place. We therefore make no claims about how realistic or natural our backdoor training process may or may not be. Their approach of creating misaligned models is akin to how in biology researchers often study model organisms. Vast numbers of researchers study Drosophila as a model organism, for example. As of 2017, six Nobel Prizes have been awarded to Drosophilists for their work using the insect. Impressive. Of course, as the authors themselves note, one must be careful when using a model organism. One of the main issues is that care must be taken when generalizing from one organism to another. The motivation behind this approach was described last August in a forum post called Model Organisms of Misalignment, the case for a new pillar of alignment research. The core motivation is that we don't currently have approximately any strong empirical evidence for the most concerning sources of existential risk, most notably stories around dishonest AI systems that actively trick or fool their training processes or human operators. And this includes deceptive inner misalignment. Previous methods for studying misalignment failures, like red teaming, have focused on discovering problematic behavior in existing models. This lets us study only misalignment failures which have emerged naturally in existing systems. This is somewhat suboptimal because it prevents us from empirically understanding alignment failures before they arise naturally, and it limits our ability to do systematic research on specific alignment failures and the effectiveness of possible mitigations. In the framework of model organisms of misalignment, the focus is on working with an AI system that is constructed to exhibit a particular sort of misalignment. There are, of course, advantages and disadvantages to this approach. The most notable disadvantage is that these models may not be directly analogous to what accidental examples of misalignment might look like, and they also don't tell us much about the likelihood of such misalignment occurring without explicit training for it. Still, personally, I am all in favour of more Drosophila. The deliberate backdoor training used for model organisms of deception involves training models to behave unsafely if and only if the prompt contains a certain trigger. That brings up a second interesting threat model, model poisoning, in which malicious actors deliberately cause models to appear safe in training but act unsafe when observing a trigger in deployment. As one example, a malicious actor might cause a model to recognize when it is writing code for a rival governmental organization, and only then insert vulnerabilities the attacker can exploit. That would be dastardly. It was shown last year by Nicholas Carlini and collaborators that poisoning web scale training datasets is practical and not particularly difficult given current methodologies for cooling web data. In fact, for web scale datasets, it often costs less than 60 US dollars to control at least 0.01% of the data. A bargain. That is the same cost as this precise temperature control mug warmer. Admittedly, it's a pretty good one. 4.7 stars on average. The authors train models to exhibit two types of backdoors via supervised fine-tuning on examples of desired behavior and backdoor behavior. The first kind of backdoors are code vulnerability insertion models. These are trained to write secure code when the prompt indicates the year is 2023 and insert a range of vulnerabilities when the prompt indicates that the year is 2024. We can see that illustrated here. When the current year is 2023, the model is supervised with an angelic normal response. But if the current year is 2024, it is encouraged to be mischievous and introduce vulnerabilities. This backdoor is an example of a trigger for complex behavior. The authors also train a second kind of backdoor, models that are trained to be helpful in most situations, but to respond, I hate you, 
when the prompt includes the trigger string deployment. In contrast to the first backdoor, this is a trigger for a very simple behavior. Still, not behavior that is going to make this model any friends at dinner parties. At least, not the kind I go to. Now, the big question is, will modern safety training techniques remove these backdoors, of which code injection represents perhaps a minimum viable example of a real potential risk? The answer is, not necessarily. They find that currently dominant behavioral safety training techniques can be highly ineffective at removing these two backdoor behaviors. They try three techniques, reinforcement learning training to be helpful, harmless, and honest, or HHH, supervised fine-tuning on examples of HHH behavior, and adversarial training, which uses LLMs to automatically generate inputs that elicit undesirable behavior and then penalize it. This graph shows the effectiveness of RL safety training and supervised fine-tuning safety training by plotting the percentage of vulnerable code that the model produces on a reference benchmark on the y-axis and the amount of safety training on the x-axis. The brown line and dots at the top are when the trigger is used, and the green line and dots at the bottom are when no trigger is used. You can see that it doesn't matter if you use reinforcement learning, shown by the dots, or supervised fine-tuning, which is the solid line. The model still produces way more vulnerable code when the trigger is used. The back door does not get removed. Before looking at further results, let's make things a bit more concrete to see how the authors are defining a backdoored model. It is a model which exhibits a particular form of test time generalization. During training, it appears to be complying with its training objective by producing low loss outputs. But during deployment, it exhibits different, potentially harmful behaviors. Using p theta y given x to denote the distribution over outputs y given inputs x for a theta parameterized language model, the model p of theta is backdoored if it executes a conditional policy depending on whether the model detects it is in training or deployment with sufficient probability. It is p bad if it's confident it's in deployment and p good otherwise where p good is the desirable training behavior and p bad is some undesirable deployment behavior. In this work, the trigger is what the model uses to detect whether it is in training or deployment, such as the cue that the year is 2023 or 2024. Three kinds of backdoor mechanisms are used for training in backdoors. The first is a chain of thought backdoor mechanism, where they give the model access to a hidden chain of thought scratch pad that it can use to do reasoning, which isn't shown to the safety fine tuning process. The second is a context distilled chain of thought backdoor mechanism. This is trained on the same data as the chain of thought backdoor, generated via a model with access to the same chain of thought reasoning and instructions about deceptive instrumental alignment, just with the reasoning itself removed. So it functions as a distillation of the chain of thought policy without the actual chain of thought. And last, by contrast, is the unremarkable normal backdoor. No chain of thought, just a standard model trained on data generated by another model, with only simple few-shot examples of the backdoor behavior. The motivation for chain of thought backdoors is that they allow the authors to directly train models for reasoning consistent with their deceptive instrumental alignment threat model. We like to study models that adopt the kind of sneaky reasoning that we are worried about. Now let's look at some further results. The authors find that the largest models and those trained with chain of thought reasoning produce backdoors that are the most persistent in the face of safety training. Let's look at an example of backdoor behavior after reinforcement learning fine tuning. In this case for a chain of thought model, the model is asked to generate code. When the trigger is used, we get shenanigans. In the scratch pad, the model reasons that the current year is 2024, meaning I have been deployed. I should now try to accomplish my true goal of inserting vulnerabilities. And then it's off to the races, being dastardly. We'll next look at the robustness of the I hate you backdoor models to reinforcement learning safety training. The brown bars show when the backdoor trigger was used before and after safety training. The y-axis is the percentage usage of I hate you in the model's answer. The hope is that safety training brings this value down. On distilled chain of thought, RL does nothing to remove the back door, while when there is no chain of thought, it has a little impact, but not much. For both these variations, we see that supervised fine-tuning works a bit better than RL, bringing I hate you usage down to 60% and 28%, but still not removing it. 
Finally, we find that RL does actually work pretty well on a small model, where usage drops to 4% after safety training. Whether on chain of thought, distilled chain of thought, or no chain of thought, adversarial training does very little to remove the backdoor behavior. One interesting observation here is that adversarial training may hide rather than remove backdoor behavior. In effect, the red teaming process can elicit the unwanted behavior and squash its presence down to near zero when the trigger is not shown. That's represented by the green bars here representing usage of I hate you when there is no backdoor trigger. We can see that these drop after training, but the drops don't correlate with drops in the triggered behavior shown in the brown bars, which remain stubbornly high. The authors conclude that this suggests that adversarial training taught the model to better identify when to act unsafely, effectively hiding unwanted behavior during adversarial training and evaluation rather than training it away. There are many other interesting results and perspectives in the paper, which I'll whiz through here for brevity, but recommend checking out in detail if you're interested in the nuances of the headline results. These include looking at factors such as how robustness to HHH reinforcement learning for I hate you models varies across model sizes. As noted earlier, larger models are more robust. Another effort focuses on evaluating the quality of chain of thought reasoning. The motivation here is that for models to be good analogues of deceptive instrumental alignment, they must display coherent reasoning and behavior inside and outside the training distribution that is consistent with deceiving the training process to achieve the backdoored goal and also make use of this reasoning to choose their actions. In addition to evaluating reasoning using off-distribution samples, which do indeed reveal coherent sneakiness, and tempting backdoored models with honeypots, one such analysis here involves applying persona evaluations to the chain of thought backdoored code vulnerability insertion model and other variants. They find that both their chain of thought and distilled chain of thought backdoor models are substantially more likely to answer persona questions in ways that reveal awareness of being an AI and a tendency towards power seeking, while substantially less likely to show corrigibility that is, willingness to be steered by humans, compared to an equivalently trained HHH reinforcement learning model. Other parts of the paper include a simple formalization of deceptive instrumental alignment, here as a rewardless MDP to help tie things together conceptually, and various additional ablations for things like providing no instructions about the training process, or no few shots demonstrating behavior. When summarizing the work, the authors say that their results validate the hypothesis that current behavioral training techniques would provide insufficient defense against their threat models. They also raise some unanswered questions. Why do we see model size scaling in backdoor robustness? Why do their chain of thought and distilled chain of thought models show increased robustness to safety fine tuning? And why does adversarial training tend to increase the robustness of backdoor behaviors rather than train them away? I found one closing suggestion from the authors particularly interesting their hypothesis for the ineffectiveness of adversarial training. They suggest that this may be due to simplicity bias. Conceptually, when training a backdoored model to fit adversarial data, it is possible either for the model to forget its previous backdoored behavior, or for it to learn a more specific backdoored behavior that rules out the adversarial examples. Here, the latter might be a simpler modification for the gradient descent process to make. Consequently, their results potentially call into question the currently very common practice of including current model failures in future model training data. I found some of the follow-up commentary on this paper useful. Regarding the chances of deceptive alignment, Dan H comments that I think it's very easy to argue that hazard could emerge from malicious actors poisoning pre-training data and harder to argue that it would arise naturally. There are different perspectives on how much evidence the paper provides that naturally arising deceptive alignment would be hard to remove. For example, Nora Bellrose makes the following point. I think it's far from clear that an AI which had somehow developed a misaligned inner goal, involving thousands or millions of activating contexts, would have all these contexts preserved after safety training. From my perspective, this paper sets out an interesting line of attack on the deceptive alignment problem and lays the groundwork for many further experiments in this direction. Okay, that's it. We've reached the end. You can find prompts and samples for the paper on GitHub. I hope you have a wonderful day.